What's up ghouls, it's Blaze and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for coming back. Um, today I'm filming for you a favourites video because I, <laughs> I've not uploaded in about six million years. So while this is like a April favourite, it's also things that I've been loving for the past several months that I've not been uploading for. Um, so we can reconnect, we can become one. Um, so I want you guys to let me know your favourites in the comments, whether that be makeup, fashion, homeware, uh, podcasts, TV shows, food, literally anything. Tell me, what do you love? Tell me, right now. Do it. Pause this video. Tell me. Okay. So I'm going to start off with my fave category. Of course, makeup. Can't live without the stuff. So this is what I've been loving. Number one for my brows. I have been loving the Kat Von D 24 hour brow pomade, which is super dirty, I'm so sorry. What's it? 24 hour super brow and the brush that goes with it, which is number 70. Um, I use the shade Graphite. My brows are super dark and if I use a brown, it looks like my eyebrows have been through the wash. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I've had this for a good like six months and it's still going so I'm pretty impressed. Um, I love this. It really is like super bold, super powerful. Lasts all day. I don't have any issues with it. Never have to reapply it. Um, and it's pretty, it's a statement brow. But I definitely recommend using it with the brush. Probably a little like, I don't know, cheeky way to get us to spend more money. But I find that it works so good with this brush, but not so good with other brushes that I've tried. So while they're sneaky motherfuckers, this duo is sick. The next fave I've seen so many people talk about but it's for good reason. It's the NYX Professional Epic Ink Liner. Um, so this is a liquid eyeliner. Um, it's like a, a felt tip one. I've been using this style of eyeliner for years. Yeah I don't think I could go back to using a wand because I'm so used to using these pens. Literally my eyeliner takes me 30 seconds in the morning. I'm just like boom 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 done sick and I still get complimented on it people are still like well that's some fleeky eyeliner and I'm like thank you NYX yeah definitely recommend this it in terms of like a drugstore eyeliner it's kind of pricey I think it's nine pounds which is uh nearly killed me so there's that um yeah it's kind of more on the pricey side but it's definitely worth it I would pick this over my Kat Von D tattoo liner I would pick it over the Kat Von D dagger liner I would pick it over, I don't know what other fancy S eyeliners I've tried, but I would pick this any day. It's sick. My next two favourites, one is pretty old. Um, it's new for me, but not new to normal people. I don't know. Um, and then the other one is more recent, but yeah, okay, I'll just show you. So the first one is the Lime Crime Venus palette, and I pair that with the Lime Crime Venus XL. <laughs> Can we just talk about the packaging on these? I mean, I, you guys have seen them about six gazillion times, but I am obsessed. I'm in love with these. Every time I do my makeup, I reach for one or both of these palettes for my eyes. Um, you know, you guys have seen these shades a million times, but my favorites are definitely um, Divine and Muse. They are so fucking gorgeous. This like corpsey nude, I'm obsessed. And Muse is, I think, I'm gonna be heavy here. I would die for this shade. It is my favorite shade, my favorite eyeshadow shade ever. Muse, I love it. Um, and then, like I said, pair it with the Venus XL palette. First of all, holy fuck. What a beautiful palette. I can't. Can we just. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Botticelli is probably my favourite shade in the palette. If I'm ever doing an eye look and I feel like it's fucking up, I reach for Botticelli and it just fixes my life. Um, so there's that. <laughs> um, I really like this shade here. Love. This is super cute. Um, yeah, I love this palette and I especially love um, Kate Marks did a tutorial using this palette and if you ever want to feel like the baddest fucking bitch, 
follow that tutorial and you will not regret anything in your life that you've ever done so yeah love these okay so I've got one piece in terms of home decor mostly because the things I've been buying that are home decor are thrifted so you probably can't go out and buy the same thing um, they're either thrifted bought them online um, but through like Etsy or um, eBay stuff like that or they're from like antique stores so they're like one-off uniques that you can't go out and find yourself so it's pretty shitty of me to show them in favorites because you can't get them so I'm going to show you this this oh, my ring light's going to ruin it I'm so mad because it's so cute this is a art print um, it's a Ravenclaw print as you can see there and it's done by a girl called Jess she's super lovely um, she's from the UK and her store is called Witchcraft I'll link it below um, definitely check out the Instagram because it's super cute and check out her store because I am so in love I think this is my favourite print of anything I've ever bought so I have like eight maybe nine different prints from artists and this is my 100% favourite um, I don't tend to steer towards colour, I mainly buy black, white, grey prints, but I fell in love with this, I had to buy it. Um, so this has pride of place in my bedroom, on my shelf, where I can look at it every single fucking day. I'm in love. Um, she also does like Slytherin, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, so pick your house. If you're a Ravenclaw, sick, we are best friends, you don't have a choice, we are literally best friends, so yeah, cool. Check out her store. Next up are books that I've been enjoying. I know with this this cultured little bitch is reading. I'm I'm proud of myself too. So can we just okay? Um, so the first one. Now I'll take back your round of applause. It's not really like a full book. What? You don't read it. It's a date book diary type thing. I don't know how you say this, Llewellyn. So it's a publisher of witchy books and. They release these date books. They've been publishing these for many years. This is the first one I've ever had. It was a Christmas gift from Jake's mum. And when I first saw it, I was like, this, it's not really, doesn't, doesn't look like something I would be drawn to in a shop. But it's very bright coloured. There's like this style of art that I've never really been drawn to. I was a bit like, mm, is this going to be too like, I don't know. Am I going to like it? Um, so I opened it, gave it a go. I'm obsessed. I literally love this. I love this. So I just opened it on this random page. So this is like, um, you've got a week view. You always get some sort of um, info up here. So this is about the April full moon, what sort of moon it is, what things you should worship or celebrate, whatever. Um, you tend to get little like information-y bits down here relating to the days so for example Monday the 15th Celtic tree month of willow begins just random stuff like that um, every single day it tells you what um, sign the moon is in um, so I'm pretty sure that's Leo so Monday the 15th the moon was in Leo and it tells you when the moon is gonna then move into the next um, sign so it's 6 14 a.m it will move into Virgo but the times in this the only thing that is a bit of a pain is the times are in Eastern time I don't know but obviously I'm in the UK so I'm GMT so everything in this book I have to plus five hours um, but yeah that's the only thing that's a bit annoying about it everything else is fucking spot on it tells you when there's new moons full moons um, different Sabbaths Everything that you could need to know is there. It gives you different colour correspondences to every day. So you can really easily like plan out what you want to do in terms of your craft. It tells you when you should harvest things, when you should plant things. I am in love with this book. I'm definitely going to get one for next year and I can't recommend this enough. If you practice the craft, um, this has been a game changer for me. So the second book I want to talk about is Wicca by Harmony Nice, the full title, Wicca, A Modern Guide to Witchcraft and Magic. I'm sure if you're interested in the craft, you've seen this book, you've seen it reviewed. I'm not going to give a full in-depth review, eh, because I wouldn't even know how to do that. I'm not a book reviewer. I just liked it. <laughs> um, there's Harmony on the back. She's a fucking babe. I love her. 
Um, so while I'm not 100% set that Wicca is the path for me, this has been such a good book. There's so much information in here. Um, the little pictures, drawings, whatever. Oh, that was a really cute one. Are uh, super cute, like my aesthetic for sure. Um, I don't know if Harmony drew them herself, if she did, fucking fair play. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I'm obsessed with it, super informational, it's nice to read, you definitely get a sense of her personality through this book and she tells you about her sort of personal experience but it's also very factual and informational. Um, there's 0% judgement in this book, it's not like this is the way, you have to do it this way. It's very open and friendly and I really really like this. I definitely would recommend this book if you are looking into witchcraft, not sure where to start, this book is 100% um, somewhere for you. It's like a jumping off point. And yeah, I've really been loving crafting. So yesterday was Beltane and I made a maypole for my altar, which <laughs> it's so cute it's a little bit overexposed because it's all white um i couldn't actually get any ribbon um because i had to grab my supplies after work so i ended up with embroidery thread but i i really like how this turned out i think it's so cute and the fact that i like did it all myself is so nice um so that's been sat on my altar and i'm really i'm really in love with it i'm kind of proud i'm like oh cute so there's that so a couple of things I want to talk about that I have been loving. Next up are podcasts. So I've never really been a podcast type of person. I never really thought about them. I just kind of decided they weren't for me. Um, I've been obsessed with Morbid Podcast. So a link to their like Instagram and website will be down below. So you can check it out. If you are into true crime, 100% check it out. I am obsessed. I listen to them when I walk to work, when I walk home from work, when I'm at home on a day off, like I listen to them all the time. They've got a Facebook page which I joined and it's fucking hilarious, so many memes, definitely check it out, can't recommend it enough, Ash and Elena the hosts are hilarious, I love them. Um, yeah, so definitely check out Morbid Podcast. So the next one is a podcast again, Fat Feminist Witch. And at first I was sceptical, I wasn't sure if this was going to be something I was interested in. While I 100% want to listen to podcasts on witchcraft, I wasn't sure whether the feminist aspect was going to be for me, whether it was going to be of interest. Obviously I support feminism, I support equal rights for everyone, but the negative connotations of a feminist were spiraling in my mind i was like what kind of thing is this going to be i gave it a go and i fucking love it i'm obsessed um i've listened to eight or nine episodes now um yeah, so i've been listening to the podcast quite a bit and um i love everything about it Paige, the host is uh, her personality is so bubbly and friendly and funny um she's like a she came from 90s Wicca into witchcraft and she talks about films like The Craft and Practical Magic and she's a soul sister. I feel that I love her. Like I was <laughs> I was born the year The Craft came out so I was not with it at that time. I was obviously not like a Wiccan in the 90s but I feel like we connect spiritually so there's that. Um, yeah so definitely recommend checking out that podcast if witchcraft is something that you're into. Other than that, I haven't been able to find a witchy podcast that I've been into. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know because all things witchcraft is my life, basically. So yeah. Um, next up is a TV show I've been loving. I'm late to the game on this one, but it's Salem. Um, so it's set, obviously, in 1690s in Salem. Um, and it's about the witch trials, but there's like a mad spin on things. So there's like this main spooky ass witch bitch and she has like a lot of sway and a lot of power in the town because she's high up in, I think her husband's like a judge or something, I don't know, I'm not really sure. But um, she is bewitching the girls to make them accuse other people of witchcraft because um, they have to sacrifice so many souls. Um, it's definitely dark, it's definitely spooky and the, the language that they use is like old 
English, it's a little bit harder to understand. You definitely have to pay attention to it, but I have been loving it. The aesthetics of the TV show are so good. I'm really fussy when it comes to uh, TV shows, especially when they're like older style, um, like historical, but I am obsessed. I'm on season one still, but I, I love it. It's on Netflix at the moment in the UK, so if you do want to watch it, all three seasons are up, so I would definitely check it out. So that's pretty much all I've got to show you guys at the moment. Yeah, so I hope this was interesting for you. Let me know your favourite podcasts, what you're listening to, what are you watching and what are you reading, because I definitely would like to know. Um, yeah, I suppose that's all we have time for. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.